The first problem I have with art schools is the length of their art degrees. As you might have noticed, most of the classes that are taught in those art schools are kind of useless. Why do you need a philosophy course on ethics and morals if you want to become a painter, for example? I have no idea, or at least I didn't have an idea when I was 19, but now in my late 20s, I kind of get it. It has nothing to do with learning, but everything to do with money because it's actually in the school's best interest to make their degrees as long as possible instead of as effective and concise as possible because the longer the degree, the more money they make. With a 37k a year tuition check, a two-year degree would be worth around $72,000, but a four-year degree would be worth nearly $150,000. And so is it possible to do your four-year degree in just one year and be equally ready and prepared for the non-existing job market in the arts? Yes, it is. That philosophy course on ethics is simply not essential. And the irony of that course is that it is very hard to find the ethics in art schools charging students $25,000 for courses that are designed to make them do extra years. And so we should ask ourselves if 25k a year for UAL is worth it. Now, when it comes to schools and money, we first have to notice that schools are big businesses and in some cases make more money than some of the biggest companies in the world. As a matter of fact, Harvard gets $41 billion in endowments every year, which puts them as the 87th largest economy in the world right above Azerbaijan. Now you might think that this is a great thing because if they make more money, they also invest that money in better education. And if they make more money, they also pay more taxes. And that money is then used to make our lives better. And so everyone wins, right? Well, if those are your arguments in favor of art schools, then you are completely right. Except for the fact that you are completely wrong. Because first of all, schools don't pay taxes. And so there's that. And second, schools don't necessarily use the money to invest in better education either. Here's what happens. Schools get money in various ways. The three main ones are funds from the government calculated based on the amount of students you have research and student tuition. And since two of those three have something to do with the amount of students you have, one of the main ways schools can make money is through getting more students. Now this system would indeed lead towards investing in better education if and only if those students decide which schools to go to based on the quality of the education. But here's what happens instead. Students base their decision on things like, does the school have fancy swimming pools, fancy gyms, fancy stadiums? Do the girls in the pictures on the website look hot? Is the school famous? Etc, etc, etc. And because students care more about these things than about the education, the schools start to invest more in fancy things that look like a lot of fun instead of investing in the quality of the education. Because a large fancy stadium or a large fancy campus simply makes more money than a better teacher. And so the money they make does not actually go towards a better education necessarily. Now you might say, sure, it's not the most efficient system in the world. And sure, it's a bit more money driven than it should be. But it's most certainly way better than it used to be. Over the last 300 years, we made an extreme amount of progress in the schooling system. And so we cannot really complain, right? Well, the people who think that it's better than it used to be are, of course, absolutely right. Except for the fact that they are absolutely wrong. Because a couple of hundred years ago, there were no problems with art schools whatsoever. And there are many reasons why there were no problems problems with art schools 300 years ago, but the main reason is that they didn't exist yet. The only way to become an artist was through apprenticeships. And so a good question becomes, how does our current educational system stack up against the old apprenticeship system? Is our current system actually better? Well, there are a couple of things. When learning from a master through an apprenticeship, you didn't only learn to craft, you also learned how to sell that craft and reach your customers. And because you saw money being exchanged, you were also certain that the job that you were learning had market value and job certainty. And so the package was arguably way more complete at that time because it wasn't just focused on learning how to make art, which is the main focus of art schools in the 21st century. And on top of that, it was also free. And if that's not enough, you also got free housing and free food while working for the master. And considering that housing and food for most people at that time was about 90% of their income, we could say that is a fair deal. Considering that in the current system, a lot of people pay $37,000 a year to learn 
or not learn in prestigious schools. And besides all of that, there's one more difference that is noteworthy, and that is the application process that we now have, which is simply put, amazing. Every year, schools demand that potential students write cover letters, present their portfolios, write artwork descriptions, send everything overseas in short, go through a rigorous testing process to see if they have the necessary skills to pay them $37,000 a year. If that doesn't sound fair, I don't know what does. Next up, network. What about all the connections that I will make in these art school streets? Will those not be making my art career? Isn't it all about connections in the art world? Isn't it all about who knows who? Well, yes, but not the type of connections that you can make in universities and art colleges. This theory that you have to go to college for connections and networking is a big myth created by the marketing departments of those big schools. I spent several years studying art in university myself and even though I have a lot of connections through that, even though I have a lot of contacts, most of them are not valuable for my career or anything like that. And most of them never will be. Here's the thing. After 10 years, only one of them has proven to be valuable career-wise in that she wrote an article in Vice when she became a journalist. Shout out John Lisa, follow her on Instagram. But let's think about that. Is connecting yourself to a writer worth $150,000 in tuition? Well, for that price point, you can pay for 300 articles in magazines and if you're a little bit smart and more inventive and guerrilla minded, you can probably pay for a thousand articles and get a complete marketing campaign spread out over several months up and running. And so contacts might just be overrated. And besides, you can get those contents just as easily on Instagram or during an exhibition opening if you're a bit social. And so for the connections, you really don't have to go to school. But is it then truly all negative trees? Well, no. There is one positive thing that has to be said about art degrees and it has to do with the job opportunities. Here's the thing. Once you have a nice art degree, you do have the most amazing job opportunities because you basically get the opportunity to turn your passion into a career so that you never have to work another day for the rest of your life. And that is truly the highest pursuit of life itself. If that is the reason that you are going for an art degree, then you are indeed making the right decision. Except for the fact that you are dumb and making a dumb decision because those careers that you are dreaming of don't actually exist. For most 150k art degrees, you learn stuff you could learn for free on YouTube in order to afterwards not get a job at all because there is no demand for those degrees. And so what degrees am I talking about? Acting, fashion, design, printmaking, studio art, sculpting, art design, creative writing, drawing, painting art photography, art history, curatorial studies, art director, performance art, installation art, etc, etc, etc. If you have any of these degrees and paid for it, you are absolutely fucked, you are absolutely broke, and you are absolutely a McDonald's employee. And so that's an interesting perspective considering that it potentially costed you 150k and 20 years of debt to get to that McDonald's type of life. Now you might say that you are not going to be a McDonald's slave but a teacher instead. And this does sound amazing because you will be responsible for the most important thing namely education during the most important part of people's lives namely being young. But then we have to ask ourselves, is this seemingly realistic career path of becoming a teacher actually realistic? And does this teaching job that you are thinking of even exist? Let's tackle it step by step. Does this job exist? Well, you see teachers in art schools teaching all over the world. Doesn't that mean that it exists, Tris? Well, yes, I guess. But here's the thing. If the only thing that you can become with an art degree that you cannot become without one is becoming a teacher, then the teacher position does sound very similar to a pyramid scheme instead. Let's think about this for a moment. If art schools are places where people pay an extreme amount of money for information that they then, in the best case scenario, can use to become a teacher and recruit new students that will also pay an extreme amount of money for the same fucking thing, then this does sound a lot like the following definition of a pyramid scheme. A pyramid scheme is a fraudulent system of making money based on recruiting an ever-increasing number of investors, in this case the students, the initial promoters recruit investors who in turn become recruiters and recruit more investors and so on and on and on. Huh. No, no, that's not possible. 
Now you might say, well, Dries, that's cool. I will just not do any of the degrees that you just mentioned. What I'll do instead is an art degree that does have job opportunities, like for example, digital art, editing, game design, content creation, etc., etc., etc. Well, in that case, you will indeed have jobs. And so you are completely right and are making a smart choice. Except for the fact that you're dumb and it's a dumb choice because all of your potential employees will not care about your degree. The only thing they will care about is your skill level in your portfolio, the work ethic shown in that portfolio, and whether or not you had sex with the boss. The truth is that in the world of doctors, people care about your degree. But in the art world, people care about your skill instead. And so paying 150k for a degree that nobody is going to care about in the marketplace might not be your best strategy. But Tris, I don't want to be making commercial work. The only thing I want to do is make fine art real art. Is there really no way for me to do that? Well, for those people, I have to say something that I wish people had said to me 10, 15 years ago. And that is that you have more chance of being struck by a meteor than becoming an artist. Let's do the math together. Let's say there are 5,000 art schools worldwide, and all of them have on average five fine art degrees, painting, sculpting, performance art, drawing, and installation art. And let's say that each class has on average 45 students in them. Then this means that each year, 1,125 students, potential fine art students graduate. Meaning that in every generation, which is a period of about 25 years, around 28 million fine art students graduate. Now, how many fine artists are making a living of their practice at this moment? I honestly have no idea, but let's make some sort of educated guess. According to Magnus Resch's Global Art Gallery report, there are roughly 19,000 galleries worldwide. 78% of them are strictly selling contemporary art, which brings the number of potential galleries for art calculation to... 4,800 galleries. Now, if you look whoa, 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 wait here for a moment. So I'm editing at this moment and realize that this is the moment that my calculations are completely wrong. And all my future calculations are based on this. And so everything from this point on will be wrong. But no worries. On the left side, you will see the accurate calculations. And on the right side, you will see me bullshitting. That's just the way I like to do my math. And it's pure irony as well, because apparently I should have went to school instead of complaining about it. Now, if we look at the amount of money those galleries make, it's not that amazing. 55% of them make less than 200K in revenue a year. And from that, they would have to pay their artists, their rent, promotional materials, uh, art fairs, etc, etc, etc. And so, yeah, I think it's safe to say that the majority of galleries are simply not paying their artists. And so I think the total amount of galleries where artists are making a real living is probably only the galleries that are making like 1 million, over 1 million in revenue a year. And that is 16% of the galleries. And so that brings our total number of galleries to 6 668.8 to 669. Now in the acknowledgement that each gallery represents about 10 artists and that there is an 80-20 rule in galleries, meaning that 20% of arts make up for 80% of the profits. We could say that only 20% of those artists are actually making a real profit that can be take, taken seriously. And so that brings the total number of artists to 133.76, so that's 134 artists. In other words, for every generation of 28 million fine artists, there are about 134 artists that are actually making some money. That's about 1 in 209,330. Now, I calculated this myself and I'm pretty bad at math, so let's say I could be off by 50%. So after a closer inspection, the error margin that I should be taking for the rest of my life is... 14,600%. Now, if we compare this to some other well-known events, then you are about six times more likely to become an artist than to win a gold medal in the Olympics. You have about seven times more chances of becoming an artist than being struck by a meteor. So in the beginning of this video, I kind of exaggerated a little bit, seven times, approximately the same, whatever. And you have about the same amount of chance, approximately, to date a supermodel in your lifetime than to become an artist.
And so if you actually do the math, which I postponed on for over 10 years until I made this video, you start to see that most artists will be better off chasing supermodels than chasing an art career. Now you might be asking yourself, Dries, isn't art the most important thing in the world? Isn't art the only necessity? I mean, after people are coming home from their jobs, the only thing they seem to want to do is art. They either play video games, watch television, watch a movie, go to theater, go to an exhibition, read a book, watch social media content, watch Netflix, whatever it is they are doing. It's all created by artists. Isn't art the most important thing? And isn't that reason enough? I mean, Dries, before people are eating their dinner, they first put on a Netflix episode. It's like the food is a side dish for the art. Art is the only necessity, Dries. Well, if that is what you think, then I completely agree with you. That is how it should be. Art is indeed the only necessity and art should be the highest paying job in the world. But sadly, we don't live in that world. We live in a world where people are willing to download movies and music for free and are willing to pay $300 for the headset to listen to that music and $1,000 for the television to watch that movie. We live in a world where artists create the demand that companies use to sell their products. We live in a world where artists are the salespeople for those companies and are not getting paid in commissions or paychecks for their work. If you want to change that, why don't you start by sharing this video with your friend on WhatsApp. And by the way, welcome to the art world. Now get the hell out of here.